Hi there, this is Ryan Malloy here at the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. In this video, we're going to discuss differences between the power rule and the chain rule. And the power rule and chain rule are two different techniques that can be used to find the derivative of a function. But they're different in the way that they're applied, and there are only so many different functions that can use either one of them. So here we have f of x is equal to 3x squared, and g of x is the horrendous looking sine of e to the x squared. And the first question is, well, which one of these two rules goes with which? Should I use the power rule here or there? Should I use the chain rule here or there? The answer is that the power rule can only be used with polynomial terms. So here is where we'll apply the power rule. We get the original constant in front, 3, times the original exponent, 2, and then x raised to whatever the original power was, minus 1. So here we have 2 minus 1 is 1, and then we can neaten this up a little bit, and this just becomes 6x. Power rule is fairly simple, and it can be applied linearly. So if you have, for example, if x equals the x squared minus x plus x cubed, so many terms, as long as it's a polynomial and you simply have a finite number of x's raised to some integer power, that doesn't even have to be an integer. It can be any power. You can have x raised to the pi power. As long as you have terms that look like this, you can apply the power rule. But once you start going into functions that are being composed, for example, we have the x squared function composed with the exponential function composed with the sine function, as we start moving away from the polynomial forms, then we have to start using the chain rule. So, what is the derivative of this nasty looking function? The simplest way to remember the chain rule is the following phrase. You take the derivative of the outside with the inside the same, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. That may be kind of confusing unless you've seen it already, but let's walk through it. So here's our outside function, sine. Let's take the derivative of that, cosine. And the inside remains the same, e to the x squared. Then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. drop down the line so you can see how it builds up over time. Okay, what is the derivative of e to the x squared? Here it's going to be e to the x squared, take our original function, multiply it by the derivative of this up here, which is 2x. And if this were e raised to some more complicated function, such as e to the x cubed minus sine x plus the square root of x, for example, then this would be a little bit more complicated, and you may have to apply the chain rule again. But we can neaten this up a little bit, and we get 2x e to the x squared cosine of e to the x squared, which is a lovely function indeed. My name is Ryan Malloy. And we've just discussed differences between the power rule and the chain rule.